IDDQD is probably one of the strongest McCree players on the planet. However, a lot of people tend to attribute that to his insane aim or his great teamwork. However, in my opinion and his, the strongest skill set that IDDQD possesses and which definitely makes him, in my opinion, one of the strongest McCree players out there is his insane positioning and his way of outplaying the opponents using his positioning. What's the biggest mistake casual players make? IDDQD answered, positioning is probably the one I see the most. People do not realize, but being a good Overwatch player requires you to be able to always mind game your opponent. If you don't have good like aim, you can get away with positioning half of the time. Let's get into the topics of today. The fundamental rules of positioning and a little preparation for the Game Sense episode, since I couldn't really distinguish them completely. Now, finding a good mix of doing your job and not dying is key. Make sure to always have an escape plan. We will talk a little bit about high ground. Go over the front line to the back line, so every hero's job and how to execute them. This part will get a little long. Um, I will probably add some timestamps so you can go over to the hero you are interested in and skip the ones you are not. We'll go over positional vision, the rules of positioning, so distraction, brute force, survival. We will go over a few examples and then I will talk to you about the best ways to learn positioning. Doing your job without dying. Good positioning allows you to have an impact without losing anything. Playing too passively means you will survive and not really much else. Playing too aggressively means you will deal a lot of damage but you won't live for long. Good positioning is defined by being as useful as possible while not dying. Finding the right balance is key and it takes some time. Make sure to always have an escape plan. A good position has a route you can take that brings you back to safety, either via a health pack or your team. Don't let yourself be split off from your team. If your team won't be able to help you in a clutch situation, then chances are that position is bad. Next up is high ground. Um, high ground is actually amazing. Make sure that you don't stand too far front on the high ground though. I will show you that in pictures later. The reason high ground is so good is because you get to choose when to engage, because you can easily drop down, however they can't get up to you. You also have a visual advantage since you can see further. You're almost immune to projectiles, since things like junk red grenades and Zarya right clicks are almost impossible to hit. Landing projectiles from above the enemies is a lot easier. And also not a lot of heroes can get here quickly due to a lack of verticality. For instance, McCree, Soldier, Reinhardt, Zarya and characters like that can't really get up to you. Here we see an example of a bad use of high ground. He's standing quite far front and we can see the entire enemy McCree. Wherever if we swap perspectives, the bottom McCree can actually see the top McCree almost entirely. This is a good use of high ground. He stands a lot far back. He can still see the enemy McCree, however this time the enemy McCree can only see his head. This is the primary reason why high ground is so amazing. Next up we'll go over the front line to the back line. <coughs> um, these categories define where you need to stand in a game and their position for each hero. If you are to the right of a hero, you should stand behind him. So for instance, a Reaper should stand behind a Reinhardt and a Zarya should stand behind the DPS. We have a little picture of an example on how to use position. We can see the blue area over here marked for tanks, the bright orange area for close range characters, the dark orange area for projectile characters. The transparent green is the bad use of high ground because it's too far front. The green high, uh, high ground is ideal. Same thing over here. The purple pad over here is really good for characters like Widowmaker. The pink on the bottom is great for supports since they have vision. And the red area is the enemy team. Also make sure that you know about the health packs. You have one over here in the building, one in the back building on the enemy side, one near the spawn, one in the bistro, which is also why this is a really good spot for McCree to stand in because we always can just take the health pack and it's self-sufficient. We have the big health pack over here, which is great for Sombra, because if she hacks it, it's high impact. And we have a small one over here, however this one doesn't get used as much. We'll start off with Sombra. Her primary job is to hack health packs, to distract the backline, and to ult the enemy team out of self, and also to charge her ultimate. 
Make sure to use your telepad to have a safe escape route. On attack, hack the enemy health packs. On defense, hack your health packs. You should play super aggressive when you have your teleport and invisibility up. Also, the more enemies you distract, the easier it is for your team to win the front line. Next up, we have Winston. His primary job is to pressurize the healers, use his bubble against Zarya ultimates, and his hit as many people as he can at once. The standard rotation is to jump in, deal damage, drop his bubble only when he gets damaged, don't drop it too early. Um, if the enemies aren't even shooting at you, you just waste it and it'll run out. Uh, jump back, get healed, and rinse and repeat. Um, try to take as little damage as you can, or else you will just feed ultimate charge. Except we have Genji, his job is to single out the backline, farm his ultimate as quickly as possible, kill enemies out of position, and overall be annoying. Make sure that you actually kill stuff. The rotation should be dash, damaging the enemy, maybe even killing him, using your deflect if you need it, for instance if a McCree sees you, and dashing out, and you'll repeat that until you have your ultimate. Keep in mind that if you kill something, you'll actually get your dash back. Also make sure that you dash through as many people as you can for fast ultimates. If you do this properly, you can have it every team fight. Also dash up into the air before ulting. This gives you great vision and using your ultimate also resets your dash so you can jump up into the air, use your ultimate and then dash onto the target you want to focus first. Next up we have Tracer. Her job is to kill squishies, distract the backline and charge your ultimate. When Tracer has a recall up, you should go super aggro since you are basically invincible if you don't get new threats like McCree. Make sure to not use up all your blinks. If you are out of blinks, you are vulnerable. However, you shouldn't cap blinks either, since you aren't recharging them while you have three. Our general rotation would be to blink in to damage the enemy, to reload while you are strafe blinking, so blinking to the side, damage again and repeat that. And then when you have killed the target or the enemy start to notice you, you blink out. And in case something goes wrong, use a recall. And while your recall is on cooldown, you should play more defensively though. Now we go over to the protectors. First up we have D.Va. She is there to soak up big damage. She shouldn't waste her defense matrix on chip damage like Tracer or Sombra or Soldier. She needs to take control of the high ground on attack. And she needs to use her ultimate to zone. Make sure to not waste your time charge meleeing. This is a very popular combo. Although charging and firing immediately is good unless you knock them off high ground. Also soak up predictable damage. Things like Fire Strike, Zarya's ultimate, Pulse Bomb. Hanzo's dragons before they emerge from the arrow, and Junkrat's mine. <coughs> also, don't underestimate Little Diva. Her gun is super strong. Watch out for Zarya and Mei, since their attacks can go through defense matrix. Next up, we have Reinhardt. His job is to provide maximum shield uptime. Fire Strike recharges ultimate, and when the enemy Rein fire strikes, he needs to counter ult. Now, Reinhardt is a lot like a game of rock, paper, scissors, only it's called Shield, Fire Strike, and Earth Shatter. Shield counters the Earth Shatter at, as long as it has ground contact. So you should never shield while being on a payload because the enemy Reinhardt can ult below the payload and hit the entire team. Um, Fire Strike counters the shield since it goes through the shield. Earth Shatter counters Fire Strike because when you use Fire Strike, you drop your shield and you're an easy target for your ultimate. Also, try not to be too aggressive. You need to protect your teammates first. Charging is usually a noob filter. You should only really charge if you are sure that your team doesn't need your shield anymore and you won't be out of position after charging. Next up we have Reaper. His main job is to melt the Reinhardt shield, lurk around corners to get picks, kill the enemy tanks, preferably Winston or Roadhog. Uh, Ryan and Diva have a lot of armor which basically helps his damage. Use his ultimate with the team. He needs a uh, nano, damage, speed, and or a Zarya bubble to work effectively. Um, also using with the CC ulti is preferable. Make sure that you don't use your ultimate on targets you can kill, such as Reinhardt for instance, or D.Va. If the enemy Reinhardt shield goes down first, your team can get easy ultimates. This is why focusing the Reinhardt shield as Reaper is really, really effective. Also the range is pretty big, because the shield is really big. You need to send really close to deal actual damage to targets. Um, in which case Wraithform is your primary escape tool. If you have it up, you can go aggressive, even in front of your Reinhardt shield. Um, however, once you use it, you should play passively until you have it again. You shouldn't teleport, obviously. Um, use it to position yourself before the fight, since the sound cue is super predictable, and usually the enemies just expect your ultimate if you use it mid-fight. As Reaper, good communication with your team is key. 
Next up we have Roadhog. His job is to get picks, not build ultimate charge and protect your supports from flankers. If you strafe to the right and back while hooking, you can kill targets like Anna because they get closer to you. You can hook targets into your team uh, unless you know that you can one shot them. So for instance, hooking a Zarya usually doesn't end in a kill unless you hook Zarya right into your team and they can follow up. The default combo is to hook, hold down your left click while hooking, which shoots automatically as soon as it can, and any cancelling it with a melee. Make sure to not overuse your heal, it's better to give your supports the old charge instead of yourself. Also, stand behind the Reinhardt shield or the defense matrix, and don't underestimate right click, um, it deals the same amounts of damage if practiced. Now the reason you want to stand behind the Reinhardt shield or the defense matrix is because if you hook your target in, tar uh, they can't get healed by things like Anna. Next up we have Mei. Her main goal is to catch enemies with the wall, uh, freeze mobile targets such as Genji, and use your ultimate when the enemy team engages. Make sure that you do not ever extend with your ice block, since using ice block may still leave you in a bad position. And the enemies expect when you go out of it, so they can just wait for you. Don't let them bait your wall. When Winston runs through the choke instead of jumping, he probably tries to bait it. However, you will develop intuition for it uh, when you can safely wall the target off and when it will be a waste. Her ultimate is the strongest zoning tool in the game, maybe even the strongest ultimate in the game. You can block entire checkpoints or choke points, and when the enemies engage, even with a Zarya ulti, you can just wall them off and counter ult them. Next up with Soldier76. He needs to help out the healers, shred shields, deal with Pharah, and get focus picks. He is insanely strong after a buff, we are talking about the Sombra patch at the moment, and he has extreme benefits from using high ground, you should use it whenever you can. Also make sure to stand behind the Reinhardt shield. Getting a couple headshots and finishing them off with the rockets is the default combo. Um, and Soldier is super aim reliant, um, so sometimes burst firing may be useful at longer distances. Uh, this is where turning on Bloom in the crosshair settings may become useful. Also make sure that the enemy's shields are down when you ult. You shouldn't ult into a defense matrix, a shield barrier, may wall or a Winston bubble. And you don't really have a real escape, so you shouldn't play aggressive unless you have an advantage. His sprint is only really useful to change positions or to come back faster after a death. Next up we have Farah. Her primary job is to clear the high ground using her E and to kill targets with her direct hits. Um, in the current meta she's not really useful since she's way too easily countered, though so we'll, we will go into this in the game sense episode. Um, and the latest patch, which is the Sombra patch, kind of nerfed her a bit since her splash damage doesn't look back anymore. So characters like Mercury Soldier can kill her a lot faster. You should use the re to push enemies off the high ground if you can. Always combo your own ultimate with something else like a Zarya ultimate. You should ask for Zarya shields since it's really strong at Pharah, especially during your ultimate. And you should pray to Blizzard for a buff because right now she's trashed here. Next up is McCree. Your primary job is to get picks with the flashbang, protect your supports from flankers, use your ultimate to zone, and work on Why Not Shield. Right click, roll right click is a really good combo which melts shields. Usually zoning with your ultimate is enough, you shouldn't get greedy. Um, if you have one target locked on, don't risk it, just fire, since one pick can win you a fight. You should always have an eye on flankers, uh, you are really good against them, so try to keep your supports alive. And you don't really have a real escape, so you should always stand on the high ground and have an escape path with a health pack available. Next up we have Zarya. Now we didn't want to put her with the protectors because she's kind of special in that she needs vision of her teammates to shield them. Her job is to get charged with her shields to save teammates with her shield, to engage at the right time using her ultimate, and to use the beam to focus down targets. You should use your shift for saving either you and your E for getting charged by shielding your teammates. If you have the pressure, you can shield yourself as you run in front of the Reinhardt shield. You need to expect predictable damage like helix rockets or fire strike to get free charge. You need to shield your teammates during ultimates. So for instance, Genji, Pharah, Reaper, or McCree. Don't spam too much right-click, because it just feeds the enemy's ultimate charge. Um, you should left-click to focus targets, even during the ultimate. So if you ult four people, and one of them is a mercy with the rest, 
it's usually better to just left click the mercy before you go over to the other targets. She is insanely strong against Diva because her beam goes right through the defense matrix. And she is really good against Rotok because she can just shield teammates when they get hooked. Next up we have the backline projectiles, one of which is Junkrap. His job is to catch flankers with his trap. Zone chokes, uses ultimate against engages and melt the Reinhardt shield. High ground for Junkrat is great because he has longer range and hitting projectiles is easier. He has an insane range, so you shouldn't stand too far front. You can actually kill flankers with mid-air mines. You can annihilate enemy pushes with ult because they tend to spread. Now, you don't actually have to run your ult into the enemy team. Usually you don't even need to kill anything with it. Um, it's good enough if you just run it into a wall since the sound alone will scare the enemy team and hinder them from pushing. Uh, be careful that you don't feed the enemy Zarya energy though. Next up we have Hanzo. Your job is to get your ultimate ASAP because it's like the best thing about his kit. You need to use your Warlock arrow to spot flankers. Combo your ultimate with others, for instance Zarya ulti. And you need to realize that Scatter arrow can one shot and you have insane pick potential with that. If you don't hit anything as Hanzo you are completely useless which is why he is super inconsistent. And his ult defines his kit, so you need to get it as often as possible. And always combo it with ults like Mei or Zarya so it actually kills stuff. You need to shoot your scatter over at the foot for maximum damage. High ground is really good at him because he has easy scatter errors from up there. And increased range. You should use your wall climb to play around with enemies. For instance if you are on the high ground and they come up to you, you can just jump down. They will probably follow you and you can wall climb back up, however they can't follow you back up. Next up we have Lucio. He can use his wall right to stall. He needs to use his ultimate for saves or engages. He needs to farm his ultimate with headshots and push enemies off ledges or try to save teammates using it. For instance knocking away an ulting reaper or a Rotok who just hooked someone. Um, make sure to only use your heal aura in poke fights. Otherwise, the speed aura is the default one. Usually it's better to let the other support heal your team for more ult charge. You should hold onto your ultimate anyways, so healing while you have your ultimate isn't really useful. Um, you should amp up your speed boost to engage or disengage. And your heal boost is basically useless in almost every situation. Unless maybe in a Zari ultimate where no one of your team can escape with your speed boost. Next up we have the overwatch category, which is defined by characters who need to see both their team and the enemy team. The first one is Torbjorn, he needs to replace his turret. He needs to first armor the supports, then the flankers, then the DPS and then the tanks. He needs to use his ultimate to defend pushes and hit headshot left clicks and only use right click against tanks. His turret is actually secondary, it's only really good for annoying your enemies and getting ult charge. And it doesn't give ult charge anymore, so you can just place it super offensively at the start. Make sure to always place your turrets elsewhere. Never rebuild it at the same spot, or else it will become predictable, and the enemies can just destroy it when they try to push in again. You shouldn't try to repair it outside of your ultimate during a teamfight. Uh, using your weapon is a lot better than trying to keep the turret alive. Your primary source of damage is your gun. It's really hard to hit, but it deals a lot of damage. Also, you don't have to stand in next to your turret all the time. Um, usually it's better to split the enemy attention by standing somewhere else. Next up we have Widowmaker, and her only real job is to get picks. She is really good on offense, since when you get a pick it's almost a free point cap. You can use your grappling hook to take high ground, either yours or the enemy's. You can use grapple when someone dives you, for instance the Genji, and you need to jump to your supports. Also make sure that you see the entire enemy team, so that you don't miss out on free kills. And you shouldn't underestimate her SMG, since she can do a lot of characters with good aim. Next up we have Mercy. Her primary job is to damage boost teammates during ults, so for instance Soldier ult or Rotor gold. She needs to heal low HP targets, get her ultimate and survive. Make sure never to underestimate your damage boost. For instance McCree can actually one shot people when damage boosted. Also, use your heal on low HP targets. Um, it doesn't scale with HP. So, for instance, if your D.Va has 120 HP and your McCree 60, the D.Va is 
lower in terms of percentages, and she may seem like she needs the healing. However, you should heal McCree first, since Diva has a bigger cushion. When you have your ultimate, it's your main goal to survive. Uh, sometimes it's better to let your teammates die so you survive yourself, because you can rest them anyways. Uh, make sure to not group up with your team, or else you will be an easy target for Graviton Surge. And if you die during your Graviton Surge, you can't really rest them. Don't underestimate your pistol, because it's actually quite strong. However, if you get into a situation where you need to use it, you probably fucked up anyways. Make sure that you use your teammates and shift as an escape tool. If one area gets too hot, you can just fight somewhere else. This is probably one of the most defining features, features of a really good Mercy player. And if you have spectate good mercies, you can see how well they use their flight between teammates. Make sure that you see everyone, so that you avoid situations where one of your teammates calls you out on not healing them, even though they had low HP. Next up we have Anna. Her job is to sleep dart uh, enemy ultimates, or use it to get picks. She needs to use her heal nade during the fight. First she needs to heal her teammates and then damage the enemies. She needs to nano boost the correct targets, and she needs to communicate effectively. Make sure not to waste your sleep dart, since it can turn the fight around. Realize that heal nade is the strongest non ultimate ability in the game, so you shouldn't waste it. Also, her heal nade range is actually huge, so you don't really have to stand close. You can stand further back, where you can see the entire team. Make sure that you have vision of everyone and everything, and talk with your team when you want to nano boost someone. Next up we have Zenyatta. His primary jobs are to discard the tanks and then the flankers to save his ultimate for enemy engages, right click against stationaries or for picks, and to put healing orbs on flankers. His healing orb on a flanker actually makes him unstoppable. In case you remember the beta meta where you ran two Genjis and two Zenyatta's, um, both Genjis having a harmony orb which wouldn't disappear even through walls, and they could just wreak havoc. Also, Discord gives you wall hacks, you need to use that. So, And you also need to realize, as a player, that if you are Discorded, that the enemy knows where you are, at least in Zenyatta. Um, sometimes one thing that can happen is that you can Discord someone, you know that they are behind a wall, you can charge up your right click, and use it when you see them peeking. However, you should also make sure that you don't overuse right click, since his left click remains his primary form of damage, and if you aim individual shots and hit headshots, you can actually deal a lot of damage. Also, Discord scales with HP, so the more HP the target has, the more effective the HP reduction will become. For instance, taking away 30% of a Winston is 200 HP, and 30% on a McCree is like... less. Next up we have Symmetra. Her primary job is to turret off flanks, right-click through chokes to place and protect her teleporter, and to protect the backline. Make sure that you don't protect all your turrets at the same spot. Uh, you need to spread them out, since otherwise a Winston or a Junkrat can just destroy them all. You need to place them early, so that you have six up when the game starts. If one of them goes down, you should replace them ASAP, uh, without dying, and try not to stay on three charges for too long if you have ones that you need to rebuild. Uh, this one is probably the most important. Do not die, because you need to get your first teleporter or else the enemy team will just overrun you, because you don't really... like, you can't really do much in a fight. Uh, laser, which is a left click, is actually really good against flankers, like Tracer or Genji, so you can use it to protect your backline. And right clicking through chokes gives consistent ult charge and zones with the enemy. Now, Bastion is kind of special, in every single meaning of the word. His main job is to reposition, to shred tanks and shields, and to combo as ultimate. Um, he can actually play really well if played well. For instance, IDDQD used him in a couple of comp games and even in Korean pro games he has uh, seen some picks. It's important that you reposition often. Uh, never let the enemies expect where you are. Also, you shouldn't underestimate your foot soldier form since you are basically like a soldier 76 with a smaller magazine higher weapon inaccuracy, but a lot more HP. Uh, with good aim, you can actually deal quite a bit of damage. His ultimate is really strong with an inner boost and charges quite fast. 
and if you map the enemy range shield, you can give your team a lot of opportunities for ultimates. Um, one disadvantage is that he is super flankable, so you need to watch out for that. Next up we have positional vision. Um, now, depending on who you play, you need to be conscious of who you can see and who can see you. For instance, Widowmaker needs to see the enemies, and I needs to see both the enemies and the teammates. Zarya also needs to see both the enemies and the teammates, and McCree needs to see the enemies, but it's good enough if he listens out for the supports. Uh, make sure that your supports see you when you need healing, just don't stand behind them and ask her why she's not healing you. Also pressing X to call for heals by default actually works, as does using voice chat. Now we go over the roles of positioning. The enemy backline position, so the divers, should be as annoying as possible. Keep track of their CDs so that they don't die and overextend without cooldowns. They need to know when to fall back and when to engage. And if you can kill them without dying, that's good. However, if you can't, then distracting them is enough. The key phrase here is to be a distraction. Next up we have the protectors. They need to make sure that they soak up as much damage as possible. Also ensure that the teammates who need cover are covered. You should have your shield or defense matrix up for when the enemies try to engage. And protecting is more important than dealing damage. The close range category is good for getting picks and it's their main priority. However, they are very vulnerable if the team's shields or defense matrix drop. That's why they have a big HP pool, so they don't implode immediately. And the best way to play them is by sheer brute force. You can just run into the enemies and deal a lot of damage. The long range characters benefit a lot from high ground. They should stand at their effective range, so that damage drop off doesn't become too big, or they don't stand too close so that they get killed easily. And you should make sure that your supports are with you. The backline projectiles benefit from high ground as well. They are really good for holding chokes, thanks to their insane range and no damage drop off. And you can stand as far back as you can reliably hit shots. Now the overwatch category sees the entire game. You need to have vision of your teammates and of your enemies. Also you need to watch all of the flanks, prioritize the right targets, and it's important that you survive. We will go over target prioritization in a later video. So now we will go over some examples for good positioning. So let's just go with the red for McCree. This is the first point on Volskaya. Now one of the really good positions for McCree is either over uh, here in the building or over here if a Reinhardt defends him. Um, this is really good because he can either fall back onto the point, which is not really good because it leaves him out in the open. Or he can fall back into the building, because there's a health pick over here. From there on out he can take the stairs up here and shoot onto the enemies over here. And he can even fall back over here, where he has two choices. He can drop down to the big health pack. Or he can take the high ground over here, which is exceptional as well. Another really good position, which only really works when his team supports him, is up here. This is what you see in pro play most of the time. Um, the range is a little bit long, so his damage isn't maximized. However, he has a great escape route over here with a small health pack. And he can actually listen out for flankers like Tracer that take the long road over here. And he can take care of this. Also, he has really, really good vision on the entire map. And in case he needs to, he can fall back over here. Or he can drop out down in order to engage the fight with his team. Um, another really good map for positioning is Hollywood. If we go with a McCree example. Um, on attack, it's really important as McCree that you stick behind the tanks over here. And when the tanks manage to push over here, you can use the stairs to take the enemy high ground. Um, usually with a flashbang you can get a quick pick. And once you stand over here as an attack McCree, you have control of this entire area, which is exceptionally strong. A lot of McCrees tend to just push through over here, which only really works if you manage to get a flashbang kill on the enemy Reinhardt. Uh, but it's usually a lot safer to take this road. Another road is back here, but then you just end up behind the enemy team and they can kill you. 
Now if we look at defense, two really good spots for McCree up, up here, because he can just shoot down the choke. And in case something goes wrong, he can just drop down here. Or over here, where he has really good vision on everything that runs here. He also has vision on the flank. And he has access to a health pack in the bottom over here. Now we can maybe go over Genji. Now Genji plays a little differently. For instance, when he's attacking, this route under here suddenly becomes a lot more attractive since he can appear back here, you know, annoy the enemies a little bit, dash through them maybe. In case something goes wrong, he can just deflect and dash back. He is also really good at taking the high ground over here since he can just run up and take care of enemies, enemy McCrees. Um, another route that I like to take is going down here again, coming up over here and dashing through into this building. Because if Genji is up here and this area is clear, which you need to realize, um, you can pincer the enemy team on the point so your team can push from over here while you annoy their backline. Now, last but not least, how can you actually learn good positioning? Now, the best way to learn good positioning is by watching streamers and adapting their play. Um, and always asking yourself the question, what your job is, what tools you have to survive, and is there a better position where you should stand at the moment? Now, positioning comes with time and practice and a VOD analysis can really help you with that. For instance, if you die in a VOD, you can just ask yourself, hmm, should I maybe have stood, stood somewhere else? Um, maybe there was some high ground that I could have taken. Maybe I could have declined the enemy their high ground. Maybe I peeked in front of the Reinhardt shield. Maybe I didn't see the DPS as support, which caused them to die because I couldn't see them. And things like that. After time, you will eventually get a feel for that. And if you consciously think about positioning, it will get better over time. And you don't even have to put conscious thinking into it. And it will just happen automatically. However, learning it can be quite difficult and taxing. And it's definitely a broad topic to discuss. Now, next time, I will go over Game Sense, where we will go more in depth. Um, some of the things I mentioned in here directly correlate to the game sense part uh, and vice versa so you should see them as two different videos however putting positioning and game sense into one video would have taken ages and this video is probably too long already which I am really sorry for so but it's well worth it if you know every character's toolkit every character's weaknesses and every character's job you can just deny them very hard which is really good if you play competitive against maybe a smurf or there's this one guy on the enemy team who constantly bullies you um, knowing their weaknesses and maybe what you should switch to can really help you out also knowing these positions <coughs> is really good when deciding on a team comp 